All right, well, welcome to the news conference to release the uh, CG Ipsos Global Survey on Internet Security and Trust. My name is Fred Kuntz. I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs at CG, which is the Center for International Governance Innovation, an independent, nonpartisan think tank on global governance uh, based in Canada. Today's news conference is being uh, webcast globally, and we have Kevin Diaz from CG to take uh, possible questions from the online audience. Uh, after the media questions. We also have media kits available at the back of the room that contain the survey. The survey is also online in its entirety at uh, the CG website, cgonline.org. In order to get to the media questions as quickly as possible, we have two presenters to establish the highlights of the survey. The first will be John Wright, who's Senior Vice President with Ipsos Global Public Affairs. He'll explain the key points of the survey. And then to explain the political and policy context, we have Fen Hampson, who's director of the Global Security and Politics Research Program at CG, and is also a commissioner with the Global Commission on Internet Governance, uh, which is meeting in Ottawa this week. And uh, this poll was partly done as a research to support that Global Commission. And you can read more about the commission at ourinternet.org. So I'll turn it over now to John Wright. Thanks, Fred. Uh, good morning, my name is John Wright, and I am Senior Vice President of Global Public Affairs for Ipsos. Ipsos is a $2.3 billion global and market opinion research firm headquartered in Paris, France, and is operating in 80 countries, publicly traded, uh, independent, and fully owned by its 18,500 employees. We were extremely pleased to work on this significant project with the Center for International Governance Innovation. I'll give you a brief overview of the methodology, a high-level view of the findings, and then be pleased to answer questions in the question and answer period. This survey was conducted by Ipsos on behalf of CG between October 7th, 2014 and November 12th, 2014, and it conducted in 24 countries, including Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Egypt, France, Germany, Great Britain, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Poland, Pakistan, uh, Italy, Japan, um, Nigeria, South Africa, South Korea, Sweden, Tunisia, Turkey, and the United States and involved 23,376 internet users. 20 of the countries utilize the Ipsos internet panel system, while the other four, that being Kenya, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Tunisia, were conducted by Ipsos computer-aided telephone interviewing systems. And all of the um, countries were approximately 1,000 interviews. The survey found that 83% of total respondents believe that affordable access to the internet should be a basic human right. The study also found that two-thirds of users are more concerned today about online pri privacy than they were compared to one year ago. Um, and that when given a choice of various governance sources to effectively run the worldwide internet, a majority chose a multi-stakeholder option, a combined body of technology companies, engineers, non-governmental organizations and institutions that represent the interests and will of ordinary citizens and government. In terms of the top overall levels of concern among the total respondents, it's criminal hacking into personal bank accounts that heads the list followed by concern about someone hacking into users' online accounts and stealing their personal information like photos and private messages, and a private company monitoring their online activities such as their internet surfing habits, and then selling that information for commercial purposes without their explicit consent. Following on concerns about invasive criminal marketing incursions um, that might affect them personally come broader based concerns related to governments and institutions. A full majority of 72% are concerned about important institutions in their country being cyber attacked by a foreign government or terrorist organization, followed by two thirds who are concerned about government censoring the internet almost equally concerned about government agencies from other country secretly monitoring their online activities and six in 10 concerned about the police or other government agencies from their own country secretly monitoring their online activities. Even if coincidentally, a majority has heard something about Edward Snowden, the US government contractor who leaked documents to the media showing the United States and other national governments had been secretly t tapping into personal online accounts to collect information about people around the world. Of the 60% who have heard of Edward Snowden, four in 10 
have uh, specifically taken steps to protect their online privacy and security as a result of what they've heard. As noted previously, global internet users appear clearly and cleanly divided into two camps. Uh, throughout the study, two-thirds are more concerned about online privacy today than compared to, to a year ago, and one-third who are not. This is reflected in the fact that two-thirds disagree that private information on the internet is very secure, and equally as many who disagree that sharing personal information with private companies online is something that they do all the time. Um, compared to the other 37% who do uh, share their personal information with these companies because it's not such a big deal. As a result, many users have taken steps in the past year to self-regulate their own behavior by avoiding certain internet sites and web applications, changing their password regularly, self-censoring what they say online, changing who they communicate with by closing Facebook and other social media accounts, and using internet access less often. Further, a full majority want the on, their online data and personal information to be physically stored on a secure server and, in particular, in their own country. Governance of the internet on a local and global basis has been an increasing part of the online dialogue because of these growing concerns among users affected by unwanted and often alarming intrusive behaviors. Various models have been proposed, but it's clear that when tested among global users, it's the multi-stakeholder form of governance that includes citizens and not just experts, international institutions or combinations of countries that has the broadest appeal when it comes to overseeing the running of the internet. This top option is followed by an international body of engineers and technical experts, the United Nations, and under 50% international technology companies, their own governments, and the United States. Wariness about the role of governments, including their own, clearly underlies the desire of a majority of internet users for a broad and more encompassing governance, multi-stakeholder body. Only half believe that their own government today does a very good job of making sure the internet in their country is safe and secure. And further, one third believe that their own government and governments other than their own will restrict access to the internet. And finally, as indicated in the top of this briefing, the importance of the internet for users, both today and in the future, uh, can't be underestimated. The vast majority, that's 83%, believe that affordable access to the internet should be a basic human right. Buttressing this view is the importance that users place for their future in using the internet for various undertakings. For them, the uses are ranked beginning with accessing important information and scientific knowledge, followed by personal enjoyment of recreation, followed by social communication, followed then by free speech of political expression and their own economic future and livelihood. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, John, uh, for taking us through the highlights of the poll. Uh, and now we'll turn it to Fen Hampson to explain the context. Thanks very much, uh, Fred and John. Um, we're very excited about uh, uh, the findings of this survey because they really do tell us uh, some new things about uh, how uh, citizens uh, around the world in 24 countries, a uh, very representative sample, uh, view, uh, view the internet. As John just said, the internet is now so important to personal communication, individual freedom uh, of expression, prosperity, that an overwhelming majority of the world's people uh, 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 or at least those uh, surveyed uh, believe that uh, affordable uh, access to the internet should be uh, a basic uh, human right. And that, that really does underscore the importance of the internet. Uh, if, you're, if you're offline, you really can't uh, uh, do the sorts of things that uh, even very basic things, uh, social communication that, uh, that many of us uh, rely upon. Uh, the bad news is that uh, trust, trust in the internet as a secure platform for personal communication and other online uh, transactions such as banking or storing private information, photos uh, and the like uh, is sinking fast. Uh, as John said, uh, two thirds of those surveyed are much more concerned about uh, their online privacy even uh, compared uh, to a year ago. Uh, those findings, I think, uh, present a major challenge 
to uh, private companies who want their customers to feel secure uh, when they do business online. Uh, they also pose a challenge, uh, quite frankly, to uh, companies that are in the business of collecting data from online users and then selling that information uh, to others. Uh, as John said, 74% uh, uh, of those surveyed are concerned about a private company monitoring online activities such as internet surfing habits and then selling uh, that information uh, for commercial purposes. Um, snooping, uh, particularly government snooping, is a worry. Uh, it's somewhat surprising that, uh, particularly in the aftermath of Ed Edward Snowden, that's not the top concern. The top concern is, uh, is uh, having one's identity stolen, being hacked uh, by criminals. Uh, but um, uh, nonetheless, uh, citizens do worry about governments monitoring their online activities, and that fear is greater about other governments as opposed to their own government uh, monitoring uh, online uh, activities. What's also surprising, I think, uh, in this survey is that now more than a quarter uh, of, uh, of the population self-censor what they do online. People don't go to particular websites. They're, uh, they may, as John said, close uh, their Facebook account. They may be more careful about what they uh, post online. But that tells you that uh, citizens uh, are clearly becoming more aware. They don't see this as a secure tool or instrument uh, of, uh, of communication. Uh, and um, uh, what's also interesting about the survey is that uh, more and more citizens uh, are taking uh, active measures to uh, uh, promote their own security, uh, such as changing their passwords. Uh, you know, that's good news. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what these findings in general underscore is that fears about human security have moved from the physical world to the virtual world. Uh, a gaping trust deficit exists in the internet as citizens uh, around the globe increasingly fear that their online identities and communications will be compromised uh, by those who uh, operate in the dark uh, recesses uh, of the internet. Um, that fear, by the way, is more acute in developing countries than it is in advanced industrial countries. Uh, but, um, but nonetheless, uh, there is, uh, there is a, a huge, uh, huge uh, trust, uh, trust deficit. One of the uh, other interesting findings, and this is particularly uh, at a time when um, there is uh, a major uh, debate about the, uh, the governance of the internet, who runs it. Uh, uh, the US government uh, uh, indicated recently that it's prepared to uh, relinquish its key uh, foundational oversight role over the uh, internet corporation for assigned names and numbers, uh, ICANN, uh, is its acronym. That's a not-for-profit corporation based in California that, uh, that governs uh, the allocation of internet addresses, the so-called top-level domain names in the internet. And um, uh, there are some countries uh, like China, like Russia, even France, uh, who favor great, greater uh, state control over the internet. But what our survey finds is that citizens uh, around the globe don't want countries uh, to uh, run the internet. They don't want their national governments to run the internet. They don't want international organizations like the UN uh, either uh, to, uh, to run the internet. Uh, the overwhelming majority, 57% uh, 50 uh, would like to see a combined body of uh, private corporations, citizens groups, uh, that is to say civic society uh, with uh, international organizations, a so-called multi-stakeholder body, uh, assume greater responsibility and oversight uh, over the running uh, of the internet. Uh, and, and that message, I think, is a very powerful one at a time when uh, uh, policymakers are wrestling with uh, uh, the future uh, governance uh, uh, of, uh, of ICANN in particular. Uh, in the uh, management and oversight of top-level uh, domain names. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Just before we open it up, I have one question myself. Um, this poll, well done by CG and Ipsos, 
is meant to be a resource to this Global Commission on Internet Governance, which is meeting here in Canada this week and uh, after being formed in January and meeting first in uh, Stockholm, then in Korea, now it's moved to Canada and then it's going to conclude its work uh, by the end of next year. Uh, what uh, is the point of that commission? What is it doing and, uh, and how would this poll help inform them? Well, the commission is, uh, which is meeting here in Ottawa uh, over the next two days, uh, is trying to, um, o over the course of a two-year mandate, uh, to come up with some uh, creative ideas uh, that are focused on the governance of the internet. And I think this poll, uh, Fred, uh, sends a very powerful message uh, to the commission that um, trust is something that the commission is going to have to wrap its head around. Uh, how can we restore trust, not just on the part of citizens living in Canada or North America or in Europe, but citizens around the globe in this vitally important tool of not just communication, the transmission of knowledge, but a, a, an instrument that is uh, fast becoming one of the central vehicles of global commerce and trade. And that's a, that's a major challenge for the for the Commission, uh, how, how, can, uh, how can we restore trust in the Internet? That's going to require greater levels of cooperation uh, between governments, but also with the private sector, because the private sector is clearly a very important player. It's the central player uh, in, uh, in the running of the Internet, uh, Internet service providers, uh, that's how you get online. Uh, they provide for your basic security online. So this is a, a huge challenge, and quite frankly, the international community is not working very well uh, together when it comes to uh, developing uh, a, a, a stronger, more efficient, more open, open, that's important too, but an internet that we can all trust. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the media present? Yes, uh, in the front here. talking about this today because there's a case that came out over the weekend where a young man supposedly from Ottawa has been squatting on the internet and creating quite a problem and now he's hacked the city of Ottawa, Ottawa's website. So how does something like this play into the results that you've seen where people are not trustful of the state running the internet but there's also crimes that are committed and we need to deal with that as well? Well, criminal activity on the internet um, and John can speak uh, more directly, obviously, to uh, the poll figures, but criminal activity on the Internet that compromises the security of individuals is the central concern that pops out of you at this, uh, uh, in, in this global survey. And I think it reinforces the message that, you know, the, the biggest threat to your security, your human security online, if you want to put it on those terms, is to have your identity compromised, your uh, personal data stolen uh, by, um, by hackers, uh, you know, some of whom may be doing it for fun, uh, perhaps like a, you know, a, a teenager, but others who have much more malevolent uh, intentions. There have been some very well publicized cases of uh, uh, credit and debit card uh, data uh, being stolen from uh, Home Depot, uh, the Target store chain, and these stories uh, I think uh, reinforce uh, that fear that you know when you go online or when you go to a banking uh, terminal uh, or a debit machine in a store, I think we all have that sense of unease in the back of the ground. You know, will it happen to me this time? Because I've heard it happening to others. Um, are you gentlemen uh, surprised by what's uh, what's happened here? I don't think Canadians or people around the world are surprised that there's been the sort of things that's been going on here over the last 48 hours. Not only is the Ottawa police site down, but also the Toronto police site, uh, the Supreme Court, and we, we do know that uh, this was uh, transmitted that it was going to happen, and it's probably the second case in Canada where uh, the group uh, allegedly anonymous is involved in this because the first one was in the Maritimes dealing ironically with cyberbullying, um, where they actually targeted uh, a specific case uh, and circumstance and went in and disclosed the power that they had. I think what comes out of this study very much relates to that, and that is the sense of vulnerability that people around the world have because 
you also see in this study the global dependence upon the internet. Um, in so many different ways over the last 21 years. Uh, 21 years ago, we, we have to think, was the first time the internet was commercialized. Um, about six or seven years later was the first time we were doing any polling about the internet. Um, and it's been within the last 14 years, the acceleration of that, only in the last seven years do people actually have cell phones that are connecting to things. You know, think about it, there are 100 million cell phones in Africa today which rely upon the internet for everything from banking to credit to, to communications. What this study shows is the increasing dependence upon the internet for people's lives. And when something happens where institutions are compromised, it brings up that most important element of vulnerability, and that's trust. If all of your dependency, if all of your records, if the records of public institutions um, are still out there, um, being uh, accessed in an unwarranted and wanted way. On the one hand, there is the sense that this is a, uh, a vigilant, uh, protected area where governments are doing the best they can. In other areas, uh, people see it as the Wild West. It, it still is open to abuse and people with the right smarts and the right tools, which are more than the common person, getting access to things. And what we see here is a confusion of who runs the internet and a desire for some kind of internet governance. Because as we said off the top, I think the most surprising aspect of this to me was, was the, the revelation of how, to what degree the internet is so integral to everyone's lives, but also that it's seen as a basic human right. Yep. I mean, when you, when you think about this, that drives it home. This drives it all because that interdependency uh, around the world for so many things that we do, this newfound element shows just how vulnerable we are and institutions are to the Wild West aspect of what the Internet can be. If I could just jump in there, one of the things that's interesting about Canada in this survey, and you see it uh, in uh, uh, that chart uh, uh, on the screen, Canadians, uh, uh, and we live in one of the most wired countries in the world, um, we're pretty sanguine uh, compared, uh, shall we say, to Nigerians. And Nigeria, as we all know, is uh, a major source of uh, spam and uh, various kinds of uh, malware. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, even compared to, uh, you know, some of our uh, 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 allies uh, in the advanced industrial world, uh, Germany, Italy, Australia, uh, we're, we're we still feel, uh, you know, comparatively uh, insecure, but uh, not as insecure as, uh, as, as uh, citizens in some other countries. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, some of the events of the past uh, uh, 24 hours uh, will bring home to many Canadians that, um, uh, you know, we don't live in a, in a, uh, in a, in a secure internet island. Uh, I mean, there are 66% uh, who clearly have fears, uh, but, uh, but I suspect as we see more of these kinds of uh, attacks taking place, that sense of uh, acute vulnerability uh, is only going to increase. Um, you know, so there, what, what's interesting about the survey is that there are differences in national attitudes when you start drilling down into the numbers. Um, do you think... Uh Well, I think that's, that's a very good point, and one of the things that the survey highlights is that citizens aren't just worried about their personal security, they're also worried about institutions being hacked um, or, or compromised. Uh, so there, there is a, a broader fear that goes beyond the individual to what you would call the uh, security uh, uh, and uh, important institutions of the state. Uh, you know, in Canada, we've seen, uh, you know, in, in over the past uh, several years, uh, uh, the Department of Finance, uh, it, it being uh, attacked, uh, subject to cyber attacks, uh, uh, Revenue Canada being subject to cyber attacks, that probably doesn't come as a big surprise. Uh, when you start going after uh, uh, the institutions of local law enforcement, like police, 
Uh, you know, the police depend on communications to be able to deal with uh, critical events that take place uh, on a daily basis. I think, I think that, that will only highlight the sense of vulnerability. In other words, uh, not only are you compromised, but those who are supposed to look after your safety in the neighborhood, uh, those institutions, like the local police forces, are also being compromised, and, and that's very worrying. So is there a way to protect? I mean, what does it say? It says that we have to invest a lot more in uh, making those systems secure, reducing the risk. You're never going to eliminate it. Um, clearly, uh, encryption is going to be important. Uh, we're seeing a whole wave of new encryption capabilities uh, becoming available. But that's a bit of a double-edged sword because uh, if you have computer-to-computer -computer encryption, that may make you more secure, but it's also going to make the criminals more secure because it's going to be harder for those who are in the business of trying to monitor these people and go after them to be able to go after them, and it's going to raise the cost. So we, we are moving into a world where security is going to come at a premium. Uh, it's going to be expensive. We're going to be investing more and more in, in making the internet, making our systems of communication more secure. And at the end of the day, the consumer, you and I, are going to be paying for it in the pocketbook. Well, anonymous, do you want to come in on this, John? Well, I, I, it, the key question you have is who would they trust to run the internet? And we're, we're still in a nascent stage, I think. Uh, you'd agree where this debate is taking place, where we're seeing some changes between countries and now globally. The poll clearly uh, supports the fact that citizens themselves in different parts of a multi-stakeholder relationship should govern the internet. Whenever you take the citizen out of and you just leave it to a certain group to run the internet, the support drops incredibly. Uh, the second part of your question really dealt with, you know, how, how you know, do, do consumers feel caught in between? And the, the way to sum it up is, if, if you took the eight top threats in the world today, ranging from Ebola to armed conflict, um, and you, you put them all in a pile, uh, people would indicate worldwide that the number one threat is cyber attacks, without question. And it goes to this poll as well that shows that the personal vulnerability of that uh, to their own website, uh, to their own personal things, is right at the top of the list. What's, I think, critical in all of this is that we may see someone like Anonymous, who, who's playing a vigilante role, trying to uncover things. But the problem is, what do you trust? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, this is the critical issue. We have a due process of law in this country, and you hope that the courts and the police will work things out and act in their most vigilant fashion. But what a lot of these things do is simply raise not only the process and, and leave it open then for people to trust. There, there may be evidence placed in the public domain before trial that may compromise the outcome of it as well. So we're dealing, as I said from the very outset, with a... a with an internet which in fact holds so much detail, which if used in the right way gives great uh, salience to the fact that people depend on this. Used in the wrong way, it can destroy lives, it can shut down institutions, um, and it can leave people in an entire nation uh, completely vulnerable because if it's not just police forces, it can be other public institutions to which other people rely upon. Do you think some of that is lack of understanding about how the internet works? You know what? I. I think pretty well when you have 83.7% uh, of people in this country understanding the internet, uh, and it's pretty much around the world that way, even in Europe it's 65%, I think people understand how the internet works. What, what they don't understand is how it's managed and regulated. What they don't understand is how, um, how smart the terrorist or the criminal activity is. Uh, they assume that uh, 
that nothing is protected. Now, let's understand something. 37% of the people in the survey basically say, I don't really care about anything I put in the internet because I'm not interacting with it. I'm not putting as much on, online that I would think. On the other hand, I'd guess that most of them have Facebook accounts. I would think that most of them have some kind of social interaction, and as a result, everything they have on there is particularly vulnerable. So it's not just about their credit cards, it's about the way in which they operate in their life. I think what they don't understand fully is the extent to their vulnerability. They do understand that they don't trust things, that they do understand that they are vulnerable and so are their governments, but to the extent of, of what that vulnerability is, I don't think they understand it fully at all. Including citizens. So he, and citizens. Citizen, the key. Can you explain how people are, are so concerned about one of these groups controlling it, but they're less right. concerned if it's kind of an amalgamation of all of this? I think, um, you know, when people th uh, think of the, the so called multi stakeholder model, it's really uh, uh, a, uh, a coalition. I think that's the right term. It, it's a coalition where they're checks and balances because, in effect, everybody is in the room. Everyone uh, has to uh, uh, operate above board. I mean, transparency in terms of the management of uh, these institutions, whether it's ICANN or, or the other bodies. Um, uh, uh, there, there is a, a desire for greater transparency when it comes to writing rules. Um, and, you know, that that's important because, uh, you know, those who are in the business uh, today of assigning top-level domain names uh, are ultimately in the business of, uh, you know, picking winners and losers in the global marketplace. Uh, you know, the Internet is, is, is no longer just a, a vehicle for the dissemination of knowledge or for social communication. It's, uh, it's a vital tool of global commerce, and that's reflected in the fact that, you know, by 2016, uh, some of the work uh, that's being done for the Commission shows that uh, 4.2 trillion in goods and services will be traded globally over the Internet. That's twice the size of the Canadian economy. It's about the, more than twice the size of the Canadian economy. It's uh, um, uh, uh, bigger than Germany. Uh, you know, that's, that's huge and it's only going to grow. Um, and, and so, uh, uh, you know, it, it, there is a sense that you need to have uh, proper appeal mechanisms, you know, when you're deciding uh, the allocation of global uh, domain names or top-level domain names. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, there's a sense that, you know, the Internet is too important to be put in the hands of, you know, one institution or one body. I mean, that's really what you're reading in those numbers, that, that nobody has the legitimacy or the credibility to, uh, to run or manage what is, at the end of the day, a very distributed system. I mean, there are many, many institutions that are involved in the, gov the so-called governance of the Internet, um, and it goes well beyond ICANN. Um, uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, when you have such a complex system, uh, you, you, you also need uh, civic empowerment. You need citizens groups uh, there as well. You know, it, it comes down to a couple of things, Brian. Um, first of all, there's a, a military term, and it's, I've got your six. And what that means is, from the six position, I've got your back. I, I think there's a sense uh, around the world that people want to know that somebody's got their back. And if you're all in one room looking at each other and not just one being responsible, um, then there's a sense of communal, I've got your back. And I think that's the key thing with this. Uh, you know, it, it goes back to what uh, Fenn was also saying. The, the underlying element of this is trust. And we're at a stage now where we don't have trust in any one institution to govern the internet. Um, if you leave it up to private companies, those are the same companies that propose algorithms which trade in the stock market or you know, deliver only certain things to you. 
Um, if you leave it to governments, there is a concern about the surveillance aspects of it. I mean, you can go through the list and you can find faults, but you can also find good things about them. And I think what, what uh, not only Canadians, I, I think what world uh, internet users want is, is a group of people who have input from citizens and are also holding them responsible for what happens. And what, what just to add, I mean, some countries are uh, at the national level setting up uh, you know, multi-stakeholder bodies to essentially make you know, the key regulatory decisions around uh, uh, internet uh, uh, development, usage, uh, management. Uh, Brazil is a good example of that. Uh, uh, earlier uh, this year, they introduced something called the Marco Civil legislation, which essentially creates a national multi-stakeholder body of civic groups, uh, private corporations, uh, government representatives, all who have, all of whom are major, you know, stakeholders uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, Brazil's uh, uh, internet. And, uh, and that, you know, is intended to be the kind of key oversight body. What's one of the things that's interesting in the survey, I don't know if you can bring it up on the slides, but when uh, you ask, you know, do you, the U.S. government as, uh, as a manager of the Internet is in one of the questions. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I mean, you know, it falls well below, you know, the U.N. and, and others, but what popped out at me when I looked at the figures was that <laughs> the U.S. has a bigger trust deficit problem uh, uh, when it comes to its key allies, like Germany, you know, like Canada, um, than it does with countries like Pakistan um, and countries in the developing world. And I think a lot of that, you know, goes back to what I would call the Snowden effect. I mean, the uh, you know, government surveillance. Um, uh, yeah, there, 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 there's there. actually there's actually a question that when we deal with the individual uh, potential governance components, we ask the five uh, of them. There's only 36% uh, of people who, in fact, support the United States. Uh, operating as the slide. single entity, so it's not that no. slide, it's a uh, further slide. one. I, I mean, sure. you, what you find is of the five uh, different scenarios, oh, the, the United States ranks dead last, so only at 36 percent. The other thing that's interesting to note is that it doesn't even achieve a majority of people in their own country. I mean, you only have 47 percent of people in the United States themselves who believe that the United States should be the sole entity to run the Internet. And a lot of that, of course, has to do with the fact that uh, many of them ha are concerned about surveillance by their own government. So this takes you all the way through it. The, the, the closer you get to the local running of the Internet worldwide, the less trust you have, the more you move out and you have other players involved, the more trust there is. So there, there's, there's the slide. The Nigerians have far greater confidence in the United States when it comes to the running of the Internet than <laughs> yeah. do Germans, France, Japan, Great Britain, Canada, all of the you know, major allies of the United States. And to me, that, that really is surprising. The, the U.S., in effect, has a better internet reputation in the developing world, uh, even in China compared to Germany, you know. So, I mean, the figures aren't high, but, uh, but it's, it's really quite surprising. I don't know about anybody else. My last question, John. Um, Napoleon in China. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. They have you know, enormous internet censorship. Mm -hmm. How confident are you you were able to get um, honest answers of the people you were uh, 
but that's a really good. Well, that's a really good question. Um, first of all, we do we have big offices in China. We do a lot of work there that are wholly owned. There are certain uh, questions from time to time on certain issues where we cannot ask them in that country. The same would go with Saudi Arabia and a few other countries. You just it, it's it's not to be done. All of the questions in this uh, survey were allowed to be done. Uh, we didn't have to seek any kind of exemption for all of the questions that were here. And we're very confident that what we got is, is right. And, and the reason I, I say that is that when I look to the results of the survey, I try to see whether they make sense. I mean, the numbers on in this survey have to be three-dimensional. And what came out of it was oftentimes you don't know what you don't know. If you're in China, uh, and you are using some form of the internet, and even if it was being screened by governments or otherwise, that's the only world you know. Uh, so when people talk about it, you know, using it for freedom of expression, uh, if there isn't a whole lot allowed, but you see some going on anyways, then you assume that it's okay in your own country. So what's, what's phenomenal about a place like China is that to the rest of us, it seems very restricted. Uh, for people who actually live in China, their reflection upon the internet and their day-to-day -day use is actually moderately good. I mean, you'd find six in 10 saying that it's a fairly open internet, which and is comparable. Yeah, yeah, comparable and, to virtually yeah. every other. Uh, there there's know. certain taboos in China. It's sometimes referred to as the three T's, Tibet, uh, Tiananmen, and Taiwan. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, we've learned uh, uh, talking to uh, 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 Chinese that the internet, as John said, is, is more open. Uh, China sees itself as having a major commercial stake in having a more open internet. I mean, they're, they're uh, you know, getting into uh, 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 the major commercialization of the internet. Um, uh, Alibaba is a good example of that. Uh, you know, a major purveyor of goods and services uh, online. Um, uh, you know, they're trying to compete with eBay and, and uh, other uh, uh, online purveyors at, at a wholesale level uh, as well. And so um, there, there is a bit of a myth about China. Uh, you know, yes, there's a firewall, but is it the great firewall? Many would say uh, not to the degree that we think it is. And, and I think that's, again, reflected, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, uh, uh, you know, the ability of us to do a an unrestricted uh, survey uh, in uh, in China. Yeah, your your base question was, can we trust the results we got back from China? Um, Ipsos having offices throughout China and a large one in uh, Shanghai as well. Uh, I, I'm very confident of these results. We had to go into this uh, approach to doing the survey using our own panels in China and working with our own people there that would guarantee that this would be true. Uh, there were no questions asked, let's say, on military security, nothing about revolution or anything else. The only one that would have come close would have been on freedom of expression. None of those questions were denied, so we were, we were, we're in pretty good shape. Russia is much more restrictive, actually. Yeah. yeah. We have two online questions. All right, uh, there's a webcast of this news conference, and Kevin Diaz will uh, transmit those that coming through our uh, online editor, uh, Christine Lugas, based in Waterloo. Uh, so the first is regarding uh, commercial hacking. Is the fear proportion proportional to the actual amount of commerce taking place globally on the internet? The second question is related to internet governance. Um, how will the multi-stakeholder model um, protect and enforce uh, human rights? Do you have a, an indication of where those questions are coming from? The first one came from the Waterloo region. The second one on human rights came from Sunil Abraham in Bangalore. Yeah, on, on the, uh, the first one, I'll let you answer the second one, John, if you like. Uh, but on the first one, uh, uh, is, uh, is the fear uh, a real one? You bet. Um, you know, conservative estimates show that uh, something like, you know, four billion uh, is lost um, through uh, various kinds of uh, uh, annually uh, criminal activities uh, on the internet. Um, you know, Canadians uh, themselves, uh, 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 you know, pay uh, in terms of cybercrime, uh, you know, by some estimates, uh, you know, 200 to $300 per annum per year uh, just to uh, deal with uh, online uh, 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 cybercrime. I mean, you know, and that, that comes in the form of, 
you know, credit card companies charging you more <laughs> uh, uh, for, uh, uh, as, uh, you know, to insure themselves against, uh, against these kinds of uh, risks. So, uh, yes, it's a, it, it's a very real problem. It's not an exaggerated threat. Can you ask the second question again? That really falls okay. to you. Um, uh, it won't, um, but um, uh, you know, ul ultimately, um, uh, an open, uh, uh, free uh, internet uh, is uh, is uh, is one of the best guarantees of human rights online. Uh, a secure internet, which is to say, an internet that that lowers the risk of the kinds of activities we're seeing uh, taking place today uh, is, uh, is, is also going to be a better guarantor of uh, human security online. Uh, but um, can we reduce that risk to zero? No. I'll add that uh, Fenn and John will both be available for one-on-ones for a few minutes after the news conference, but are there any more questions for the, uh, the general session at this point? All right, thanks. That concludes our news conference. Thank you for coming. All right, well, welcome to the news conference to release the uh, CG Ipsos Global Survey on Internet Security and Trust. My name is Fred Kuntz. I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs at CG, which is the Center for International Governance Innovation, an independent, nonpartisan think tank on global governance uh, based in Canada. Today's news conference is being uh, webcast globally, and we have Kevin Diaz from CG to take uh, possible questions from the online audience. Uh, after the media questions. We also have media kits available at the back of the room that contain the survey. The survey is also online in its entirety at uh, the CG website, cgonline.org. In order to get to the media questions as quickly as possible, we have two presenters to establish the highlights of the survey. The first will be John Wright, who's Senior Vice President with Ipsos Global Public Affairs. He'll explain the key points of the survey. And then to explain the political and policy context, we have Fenn Hampson, who's director of the Global Security and Politics Research Program at CG, and is also a commissioner with the Global Commission on Internet Governance, uh, which is meeting in Ottawa this week. And uh, this poll was partly done as a research to support that global commission. And you can read more about the commission at ourinternet.org. So I'll turn it over now to John Wright. Thanks, Fred. Uh, good morning, my name is John Wright, and I am Senior Vice President of Global Public Affairs for Ipsos. Ipsos is a $2.3 billion global and market opinion about online privacy today than compared to a year ago, and one-third who are not. This is reflected in the fact that two-thirds disagree that private information on the internet is very secure, and equally as many who disagree that sharing personal information with private companies online is something that they do all the time, um, compared to the other 37% who do uh, share their personal information with these companies because it's not such a big deal. As a result, many users have taken steps in the past year to self-regulate their own behavior by avoiding certain internet sites and web applications, changing their password regularly, self-censoring what they say online, changing who they communicate with by closing Facebook and other social media accounts, and using internet access less often. Further, a full majority want the on, their online data and personal information to be physically stored on a secure server and, in particular, in their own country. Governance of the Internet on a local and global basis has been an increasing part of the online dialogue because of these growing concerns among users affected by unwanted and often alarming intrusive behaviors. Various models have been proposed, but it's clear that when tested among global users, it's the multi-stakeholder form of governance that includes citizens and not just experts, international institutions or combinations of countries that has the broadest appeal when it comes to overseeing the running of the internet. 
This top option is followed by an international body of engineers and technical experts, the United Nations, and under 50% international technology companies, their own governments, and the United States. Wariness about the role of governments, including their own, clearly underlies the desiratory citizens and government. In terms of the top overall levels of concern among the total respondents, it's criminal hacking into personal bank accounts that heads the list followed by concern about someone hacking into users' online accounts and stealing their personal information like photos and private messages, and a private company monitoring their online activities such as their internet surfing habits, and then selling that information for commercial purposes without their explicit consent. Following on concerns about invasive criminal marketing incursions um, that might affect them personally come broader based concerns related to governments and institutions. A full majority of 72% are concerned about important institutions in their country being cyber attacked by a foreign government or terrorist organization, followed by two thirds who are concerned about government censoring the internet, almost equally concerned about government agencies from other country secretly monitoring their online activities, and six in 10 concerned about the police or other government agencies from their own country secretly monitoring their online activities. Even if coincidentally, a majority has heard something about Edward Snowden, the US government contractor who leaked documents to the media showing the United States and other national governments had been secretly tapping into personal online accounts to collect information about people around the world. Of the 60% who have heard of Edward Snowden, four in 10 have uh, specifically taken steps to protect their online privacy and security as a result of what they've heard. As noted previously, global internet users appear clearly and cleanly divided into two camps. Uh, throughout the study, two thirds are more concerned higher of a majority of internet users for a broad and more encompassing governance multi-stakeholder body. Only half believe that their own government today does a very good job of making sure the internet in their country is safe and secure. And further, one third believe that their own government and governments other than their own will restrict access to the internet. And finally, as indicated in the top of this briefing, the importance of the internet for users, both today and in the future, uh, can't be underestimated. The vast majority, that's 83%, believe that affordable access to the internet should be a basic human right. Buttressing this view is the importance that users place for their future in using the internet for various undertakings. For them, the uses are ranked beginning with accessing important information and scientific knowledge, followed by personal enjoyment of recreation, followed by social communication, followed then by free speech of political expression and their own economic future and livelihood. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, John, uh, for taking us through the highlights of the poll. And now we'll turn it to Fen Hampson to explain the context. Well, thanks very much, uh, Fred and John. Um, we're very excited about uh, uh, the findings of this survey because they really do tell us uh, some new things about uh, how uh, citizens uh, around the world in 24 countries, a uh, very representative sample uh, view, uh, view the internet. As John just said, the internet is now so important to personal communication, individual freedom uh, of expression, prosperity, that an overwhelming majority of the world's people uh, 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 or at least those uh, serving in research firm headquartered in Paris, France, and is operating in 80 countries, publicly traded, uh, independent, and fully owned by its 18 and a half thousand employees. We were extremely pleased to work on this significant project with the Center for International Governance Innovation. I'll give you a brief overview of the methodology, a high level view of the findings, and then be pleased to answer questions in the question and answer period. This survey was conducted by Ipsos on behalf of CG between October 7th, 2014 and November 12th, 2014, and it conducted in 24 countries, including Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Egypt, France, Germany, Great Britain, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Poland, Pakistan, uh, Italy, Japan, um, Nigeria, South Africa, South Korea, Sweden, Tunisia, Turkey, and the United States and involved 23,376 internet users. 
20 of the countries utilize the Ipsos internet panel system, while the other four, that being Kenya, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Tunisia, were conducted by Ipsos computer-aided telephone interviewing systems. And all of the um, countries were approximately 1,000 interviews. The survey found that 83% of total respondents believe that affordable access to the internet should be a basic human right. The study also found that two-thirds of users are more concerned today about online pri privacy than they were compared to one year ago. Um, and that when given a choice of various governance sources to effectively run the worldwide internet, a majority chose a multi-stakeholder option, a combined body of technology companies, engineers, non-governmental organizations and institutions that represent the interests and will of organizations.